have and are you starting to kind of zero in on your rotations and yeah. kind of who will play and who will you know maybe not be playing as much the depth is uh you know the depth obviously makes you feel comfortable you know what i mean as, as a defensive staff when you're playing them because you got guys that you know hey something happens right we can move this guy around starting to really get honing into those personnel packages you know who do we want to get on the field at the right time and when you have some of these young skill players like we have that are, that are talented guys, you know what I mean? It's, it's our job to make sure we find creative ways to get them on the field uh, as opposed to just our base package. Um, and that's kind of what this time of year is meant for. There's been a lot of talk about this offense being pretty prolific. How has that helped having that type of a strong offense to go against day in, day out? Well, so first off, right, there's, there's two parts of that. One is the personnel, right? And then the other part is the scheme, right? So. Uh, Kalen, what he does schematically has been phenomenal for us. Obviously, what it's going to be in the season, right, because we don't have to deal with it, other people do. But for us to be able to see all those different looks and the multiplicity of what he's doing and the creative ways he gets to those things has just been – it's been phenomenal for us. It's changed us as a defense. Um, then the skill level of, of our wide receivers, our running backs, tight ends, are, I think are probably the most improved position on the team, in my opinion, just looking from an outside in. Um, and then obviously the dynamic quarterbacks, you know what I mean, and, and their arm talent. So uh, for us, that that part has been really good, but uh, cannot overlook the scheme and what that's done for us defensively. I know you felt pretty good so far in camp about your about your unit, but after having your dad here and having that outside perspective, you know, kind of unbiased opinion, did he kind of confirm some of the positive thoughts you guys have had? Certainly confirmed, you know, some of the things that I think we already know. Um, you know, just the improvement of some of these young players that, you know, he got to watch seven games last year. So getting to see them now, um, their footwork is so much cleaner, their anticipation of things, they're playing fast. Obviously, uh, you know, what, what Dave Blue and Matt Ray have done in the weight room, it just translates to a football field, you know. And uh, you start looking back, game planning, right, and you look back from where some of those young guys were that were playing out there on the field against Ball State, uh, and you forget how far they've really come. You know, you know they've improved, right? But then when you actually take a step back and you go, wow, you know what I mean? This is, it's pretty exciting. It's a long time defensive coordinator uh, targeting your thoughts on how it's been called and how do you guys kind of coach it, you know, to, to avoid those kind of penalties? Uh, you're talking about from my dad's perspective? Long -time or from your, your, your perspective, rather, yeah. And how I call it? Yeah, and, and your, just your thoughts on it, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, I, I just think uh, for, you know, ultimately, it's, it's funny, the same system, right, is what we've ran at different places, okay? So Tom and I both branched out from my dad at Ole Miss, but my dad had a certain way of calling it. Um, Tom had a certain way of calling it at South Florida because of the way he called the system and then the personnel. That changed at Indiana, myself, Eastern Illinois, to South Alabama to Indiana. We all kind of call it a little bit differently, but we call some of the same place, you know what I'm saying, or really all the same place. So for me, I'm more of a pictures guy, you know what I mean? I see the picture, I make the, make the call. Um, I'm an on-field signaler, so that changes a little bit of stuff in terms of how we do those things. Um, but, you know, for us, uh, we just, you know, we kind of adapted with the things that we needed to change in the springtime, and then we got good at it in the summer and then just kept on moving from there. Uh, Marcelino, let me talk about Coach Ballou and, you know, some of the explosion you get from just different players. I mean, Marcelino, how close is he to his ceiling? Do you feel like or how much more is there for him to get out of no. his potential? Pretty, pretty impressive. Just um, the again, you start talking about some of those ways that you got to be able to utilize Lino. I think that's some of the things that we're exploring and getting into. You know what I mean? Just utilizing his full skill set. Just because he is so powerful, he is so fast. You know, so just uh, uh, to him finding those multiple roles, right, where he's going to be placed on the field based off the situation, is going to be really important. You know, and he's kind of taken ownership of that. He's matured a great deal. Um, you know, he's a he's a passionate energy player. You know what I mean? And sometimes those passionate energy players have to be reined in to some degree. And I think, I think he is learning those things and, and has much improved from where he was before. How do you rein him in? I guess just remind him like hey. accountability every yeah. single day, right? So, and that doesn't change. The way we hold you accountable uh, doesn't have to be emotional. Doesn't mean we love you any less. But we set the standard. When you meet the standard and expectations, we're going to love you up and pat you on the back and show you how you, tell you why you did it right. When you don't, there's consequences, and then we move on. That's a defensive line depth developing, and uh, you, you're finding some roles for guys. Significant improvement there. Probably on our side of the ball, that's probably the most improved unit from where we were a year ago. Uh, and I think that's saying a lot because of some of that young back-end talent. So um, just 
those guys are really they're working hard. Some guys that we just you know you always you kind of identify. Okay, you know Jerome Johnson, right? Jerome Johnson's a good football player, but then you identify about four or five guys that you're like we really need them to come on, and if they do. We'll probably be in good shape. If they don't, right? Well, it's going to be Jerome. You're going to be playing a bunch. You know what I'm saying? So, for us, having that uh, has been really critical. When most of those guys <clears throat> have kind of taken their game, probably exceeded our expectations. Who are some of those four or five guys that you're seeing? I'd say Lance Bryan is the first one to step out to me. He's just he's playing at a very high level right now. He has become a guy from just somebody that executes, all right, uh, to now he he's become a true playmaker for us. Obviously, uh, Demarcus Elliott coming in and owning that role in such a short amount of time has been really important for us. Trey Maurice, Shamar Jones. Um, I mean, and then some of those young guys are, are really doing some good things. With the line being probably your, your least experienced area on that side of the ball, is there an advantage to having more guys coming in to give in the, that offensive, opposing offensive line different looks constantly? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I, I think part of those different looks are just uh, – or what we do schematically with based off of what package is on the field, you know what I mean? <clears throat> um, but from that standpoint, I do think when you have some savvy speed guys versus some big, you know, big pluggers in there, that can make, you know what I mean, sometimes that's a, that's a difference for us. Speaking of Marcelino, last year, him and Cam were the same position, Cam and Jones, so you really couldn't get them on the field a lot yeah. together. This year, obviously, different positions. Without getting anything away, how – Creative can you be when you have two guys who are such great athletes can rush the passer, you know, off the edge, blitz for you, yeah. drop into coverage, play the run. I mean, how much fun is it to kind of design stuff with those two on the field? Pretty fun, <laughs> you know. I mean, it. Uh, I mean, you. You. I think it's. And I've told you guys this before. I think it's my job as the coordinator and as a defensive staff to take dynamic athletes and find creative ways to get them in one-on-one -on -one matchups. And I think that's kind of what our area of focus is right now. You talked about how freshman, you know, from freshman year to sophomore year, you see the advances from the spring and coming into the fall. Um, Devin Matthews was a guy who played last year a little bit, and um, Bryant Fitzgerald getting experience. I mean, how much do you feel like they've come along from wherever they were? Guys like Bryant, I'm sorry, who else did you uh, say? Devin Matthews. Yeah, so, I mean, Devon's, him and, and, and Fitzy are just, uh, you know, they, all, they had the talent, you know what I mean, from day one. They're just safety is such a uh, it's such a feel position sometimes you know what I mean it's such an instinctive position where you say look here are the rules right you work within the rules but ultimately get a joker down you know what I mean and make a play when you're back there and for those two guys experience is the only way to accomplish that goal and and uh, as they start to gain more and more experience you see them start to anticipate and that's the difference in a five or six yard gain on an out route right versus them getting a PBU or a pick and we're starting to make those plays. How much does uh, Khalil Bryant's experience and maturity I mean, help you in those aspects? So Khalil, right, I mean, he's like the, the godfather in that room right now because if you think about it, everybody else is a redshirt sophomore or freshman or whatever. He's, he's the one that they kind of all look to. Um, Khalil's not the most talented guy in that room, certainly, but he is one of the most productive because he, is, he, just, he knows where to put his eyes. He's seen so much, uh, and he just makes plays. And Khalil's probably one of the most sure tacklers in our defense. All right, what about the guy coaching that room? How much of a pain of a butt is he? Say that the again. The guy coaching that safety room. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. You know, diff <laughs> difficult to deal with every day. You know what I mean? We just try to work around him as best we can. <laughs> All right, Casey, get up here. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks,